This video is a replay of a live training I did on how to correctly use keywords on your site. This process is also known as on-site optimization. And in this video, I'm just gonna boil it down into the three biggest things that you need to know, and to be honest, that most small business websites get wrong. In this video, I also talk about and show my free on-site optimization template that you can get for free also by going to mysiteranked.com forward slash kit. Now let's get into the video. In today's presentation, we're gonna be talking about how to actually use keywords on your website. Last week, um, I talked about what keywords are, how to choose the best keywords for your website, and then uh, I talked about my keyword research template. Um, and so in today's presentation, it's gonna be basically how do we take some of that information that we learned last week and now apply it to our website. And really today is where we get into, um, you know, really kind of the, the nuts and bolts of how to actually do SEO on your website. Real quick though, I will just hop on over and show you the keyword research template one more time. So uh, for example, Ryan hasn't seen this. And if you guys don't remember, this is inside of my Facebook group, or you can email me for it. If you go under guides, all of this stuff is under these SEO DIY resources. So the first one being this keyword research template, um, you'll have to make a copy of it to use it. So you'd go file, make a copy in uh, Google Sheets. And basically, uh, I've got some actual examples of keyword research for um, uh, fictitional, fictitious uh, landscaping company. And I've got homepage examples, service page examples. And uh, if you might recall last week, those that you were here, those that were here is that you want to choose a uh, a main target keyword for your homepage, and then you want to choose a focus keyword for all of your additional pages. Um, one thing I didn't necessarily mention is that as you do your keyword research, there's always there's also going to be kind of other keywords that pop up along the way, and I would recommend that you throw some of those into, you know, your keyword research document, whatever you decide to use, because those will end up coming in handy today with what we're doing. So, and I'll show you that in just a sec. All right. So that's basically what I just showed you. Um, so today, what we're gonna be talking about are these three things. These really make or break the SEO on your website. Um, and that's your URLs, your titles, more uh, commonly known in the SEO world as title tags, and then the headings on your pages. So this is also what can be referred to as on-site optimization, or you might hear this referred to as on-page optimization. These are essentially the things that you can do on your website that improve your rankings. Um, there's off-site SEO, which would be things like getting your website listed on uh, business directories, getting mentioned on another website, um, perhaps getting reviews on your Google My Business listing. That would be off-page optimization that still has an impact on your search presence. This is on-site. And so the three main things, again, are, are these three things. There are other elements that go into it, but honestly, if you can master these three things, you will be leaps and bounds ahead of most small business websites. Um, I work with a lot of small businesses and, and usually we, we get into their website and if we just can kind of focus on improving these three things, um, we make significant headway and usually these aren't, um, you know, set up correctly. So, so the first thing we're gonna talk about are our URLs. These are also known as the slug. And basically all that is, is, um, you know, what comes after your actual domain name. So in this example, we've got a landscaping company, Acme Landscapes. And, um, you know, most small businesses don't put much thought into this. I'm going to encourage you today uh, that it should be something you prioritize. And for Tammy and, um, you know, any of my clients, we've taken care of 
uh, this on your core pages for you. So you don't necessarily have to worry about it for any blog posts, uh, podcasts, pages, things like that. That's certainly something you could, you know, apply this to. So in this example with Acme Landscapes, like I said, most businesses would just simply, you know, they just usually roll with what the, the page is, you know, so in this case, it's a page about patios. But to optimize this, you would actually want to go back to your keyword research, look at what the focus keyword we chose, and then look at some of the other um, supporting keywords for this particular service. So in this particular example, their focus keyword is patio installation. They build and install outdoor patios. So their old URL looked like this, but a better optimized URL, URL would be something like this, forward slash outdoor patio installation. Um, they've actually included their focus keyword, and then they've added an additional keyword, which comes from their keyword research. So patio installation is the main keyword for that page, but they've got, you know, outdoor patio design that gets quite a bit of searches. So with your, with everything I'm going to talk about today, you can mix and mash and you can, you can have more than just your focus keyword. Um, but there are some caveats, which I'll talk about in just a sec. So outdoor patio installation would be a better optimized URL, but for local businesses, there's one more element you want to add, and that's just simply adding the city, uh, neighborhood, or state that you're trying to rank in. So in this case, if they're ranking, wanting to show up in Springfield, they could optimize this URL better as outdoor patio installation Springfield. And why this ends up being really important is um, because your URLs actually have a really significant impact on the that page's rankability, which I, 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 you know, I don't think most people quite realize, but I am going to stress it. I'm putting it at the beginning of this presentation because if we kind of think sequentially of how you would build a page, this is probably one of the first things you would want to get right. But I will say it's probably maybe the more elusive, um, you know, concept to, to try to understand. So I'm going to try to, you know, make it as crystal clear as possible. But why these end up impacting your ranking so much is because Google, um, you know, literally takes that page name um, at, at face value. And so if you can name your page, you know, with your focus keyword, um, you'll have a much stronger chance of ranking for that for that focus keyword. And the, the kind of nice thing about your URL is it doesn't really, it's not super visible. Obviously in this example, you can kind of see it. It will, um, it will show up um, in search results, but usually it's pretty uh, hidden. And so you can, you can have your URL be something more specific um, that you want to rank for, but you can actually optimize your page um, to be a little bit more like uh, front end friendly. Uh, and and I'll, I'll kind of show you some more examples of that here in a sec. So the formula that I'm going to talk about goes as follows. In your URL, and we're not talking about your domain, your actual domain name. I'll touch on that in a sec. We're talking about just your individual pages and posts. You want to include your focus keyword, the, the keyword for that particular page that you want it to rank for. And if room allows, you can include other frequently repeated words from your keyword research, like I showed you with outdoor patio installation. You should, however, limit your URLs to about three to five words. So if your focus keyword is, you know, four or five words, you probably won't have much room to um, add other words. And this also means you don't have to use five words. Um, in fact, most of the time I am usually keeping mine to about three, in all honesty. 
The other big thing you want to keep in mind is to never use the same word or try not to use the same word more than once in your entire URL. Um, so I'm actually, I'll jump back and we'll kind of look at this. So for example, here we've got acmelandscapes.com. So landscapes is, is flat out in the name and so is Acme. So we would actually want to steer clear of using the word landscapes in our URLs. Um, and here's why, because if you do that too much, you'll actually have an over-optimized, you'll, you'll, that page will actually be over-optimized because Google, when it reads this, it takes into consideration everything in the string. So it's looking at Acme landscapes, outdoor patio installation. Um, so if we had landscapes, it would just, we kind of be over, optimized for the word landscapes. Now you can use words like landscaping or different variations of that. That's totally fine. And I will say there are some scenarios where you're just not going to avoid using the same word in your URL. And that's fine too. Just when you can't avoid it, try to do so. And then avoid filler words and adjectives. So avoid, you know, and the, um, those type of words, and then any adjectives. There's really no need for any adjectives um, in your URL unless you're a product and the only you know way to differentiate that product from the, maybe it has a similar, like it's a, it's a type of blue jeans and, and maybe it's uh, denim blue jeans with you know sparkly beads or something. Um, and if that's the only way to differentiate it, then you're, you're going to have to do that. But in general, these are kind of the, the rules to follow. So here's a real life example that I hope lends a little bit more clarity. This is a law firm. And last week I, I showed a lot of examples from a law firm, but this is actually a real law firm where we went ahead and, uh, you know, made improvements on their URLs. So on the left, you're going to see focus keywords. Here's their previous URLs oops, in the middle. And then I've highlighted what the new URL structure is. Now, keep in mind before, you know, I've taken the actual law firm's name out here, but you know, before here is gonna be their actual domain name. Um, and the other thing I wanna bring your attention to is in many cases, you've got um, pages that are parented to other pages. So in this case, I've only highlighted family law the pages that we've created for their, their family law practice or side of their business. And underneath family law, they've got several pages, divorce, adoption, prenups, uh, custody, mediators, guardianships. And why I bring that up is because I want to get back to that whole not using the same word more than once in the entire string. What that means is try not to even in your, you know, this page here, you want to try to avoid using the same word more than once. But keep in mind, um, if I've got attorney here in this parented page, um, I don't necessarily have to have attorney here because Google's going to make that connection. Google's going to look at the entire string and go, all right, I'm seeing prenup, I'm seeing family law. Okay, I'm, I'm painting a picture of what this, this website is all about. So I'll just um, kind of go down the list here. So obviously we've got their, they've got a, a page just dedicated to family law. Well, originally that was just simply family law. You know, that's fine. That's what probably most websites and businesses would name that page. However, family law attorney is one, we are, you know, from our keyword research that has more intent and also it gets searched more often. So more people are going to search family law attorney when searching for these services. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll just make that, that page um, family law attorney. Then underneath we've got divorce lawyers Fargo. Now we are wanting to rank locally. So in our case, we are you know, trying to rank with the you know, word Fargo, but you wouldn't necessarily need Fargo uh, if you're trying to rank regionally or nationally. But in our case, we're, we're trying to rank local. So divorce lawyers, Fargo, 
the original page included stuff about separation. Um, so the original URL was divorce separation, but um, separation, people don't, in our keyword research, we found like hardly anybody searches separation. Um, the, the thing that gets searched the most is divorce. So we went with divorce, divorce lawyers Fargo. But the neat thing that I wanna bring your attention to is that what's cool is we've included the word attorney and lawyers in our, in our same string here. So we're kind of, you get to double dip. Uh, we're gonna probably rank for divorce attorneys and then we'll rank for divorce lawyers because it's all in the same URL. Now, had we found that divorce attorneys actually gets more searches, what I wouldn't have wanted to put, you know, family law attorney forward slash divorce attorney Fargo. I would have probably just put divorce Fargo or in this case, swap out lawyers because it's very similar. It gets um, a similar amount of searches. Um, and so on. So next is adoption. Again, here's that example, probably even better. Adoption attorney Fargo is the thing that gets searched the most. Original URL was simply just adoption. But in our case, we went with family law attorney adoption Fargo. We left out attorney. We could um, put lawyer in there as well. And um, we probably have equal success. I will kind of stress, don't overthink this too much. If you just kind of follow this framework, You'll, you'll be leaps and bounds over your competition. And honest, honestly, even though we follow this formula in my own business, every time we do this, we kind of, we take uh, liberties. So we just felt like, ah, let's just go with adoption here rather than putting adoption lawyer. Um, and so let's see. Here's an interesting example, uh, prenuptial agreements and domestic contracts. The page is actually more so about domestic contracts because under that there's several different things that fall under that like prenups, postnups. But the number one thing that gets searched, people don't search domestic contracts. They search prenups like nine out of 10 times. So we wanna tap into that. That's gonna be our bread and butter here on this page. So we wanna lean into that. So the original page actually, they had this pretty right. It was prenuptial agreements, but we're gonna try to expand on that and go with prenuptial and contracts Fargo. So we're trying to tap into, you know, that domestic contract, um, you know, prenuptial contract type thing. And um, let's see, you're getting, the, you're getting the gist. The only other one I'm gonna talk, touch on here is mediators. And here's why. Um, on the front end of our website, on the page itself, we're probably not gonna put mediators. We're gonna put something like mediation services. That's more like, that's more viewer friendly. Uh, uh, and so this kind of gets back to my point of the URL can sometimes be a little bit more sloppy or you can really lean into the keyword. Whereas on the front end of your website, you might you know, need to craft the words a little bit better. So we wouldn't put mediators Fargo, that would look a little tacky we would have met mediation services. But in our URL, we can just lean right into that. And we just went with Mediators Fargo, which actually gets more searches than mediation services. Um, but on the front end, like I said, the front end of our page, we're probably gonna have like uh, mediation services. And I'll, I'll, I'll open it up for questions because I know this probably was a little bit complicated, but the one thing I'm gonna stress is if you go and change these, set up redirects. What that means is um, some websites will do this automatically. If you're using Wix or um, uh, like Squarespace, I think most of those actually will automatically do this for you. What it means is when you change that URL, um, if somebody comes to the old one, you don't want them to land on a page that says, you know, broken link or 404 error. This page does not exist. So you want to set up redirects. Now, Tammy, my client who's on the call here, their platform does it automatically, which is really cool. So you can update that URL and it, it does it automatically. But if you're using WordPress, you're gonna wanna um, use a plugin and there's, there's tons of them out there. One, um, there's one just called Redirection. There's another one that I really like that's called 
uh, WP301 redirects, and I can show you the link here if you're interested. And it actually does all this automatically for you and it gets it about 90% right. So if you went and changed every uh, URL on your website, you could install this plugin and it's smart enough to realize where to send people because usually your page is gonna be somewhat similar. You know, the URL is not gonna change so dramatically. So the plugin gets it about 90% right. And then if it doesn't know where to send the traffic, you can just send that to a homepage or you can actually tell it where to send it. So you could have like a real, you know, some websites get real creative and have like these like funny 404 pages. Um, but I just recommend sending that traffic to the homepage. Okay, before I move on to titles, any questions on this? I'm just gonna go to the chat. Oh, is it important to include dashes between the words? Uh, yes, it is a great question. So let's go back to some of our examples. Yes, so I would recommend putting dashes between your words rather than just uh, smashing it together. And then the other thing is don't use underscores. Um, so it's, um, it's better to use hyphens versus underscores and uh, use hyphens versus, you know, uh, no spaces at all. So the hyphen ends up being your space and it's signals to Google that, you know, there's a break in those words. Any questions? Okay. I felt like I maybe overcomplicated that a bit, but um, my the thing I'll stress is, you know, if you follow the formula that I laid out, here we go, you will, you'll get this at least 90% and you will most likely be leaps and bounds ahead of your competitors. The one thing I always get questions about is what if or should I include my main keyword in my domain name? Um, so for example, oh, I thought I had an example, here we go. So for example, if in this case, it Acme Landscapes wants to actually show up for the keyword Springfield Landscaping. So they would ask, you know, is it better to use Springfield Landscaping? And unfortunately, this is kind of a, it depends answer. So number one, it's not worth it to, if you've got an existing website on a domain that you've had for some time, uh, it, it will probably do more damage than it does good to go switching. Because your, if your website's been around for a couple of years, that website starts to have like equity. And something you guys maybe didn't know is that the SEO, what we think of as like Google power, Google juice, or whatever you want to call it, is actually all in the URL mainly. It follows that URL. So if you go and if you do all this work on your website and your URL starts to gain this authority and equity in the eyes of Google, and then all of a sudden you go change it, you are actually starting basically at ground zero again. You're starting all over. So the only time I recommend this is if you're starting from scratch. And if you're a brand new website, um, then there is a slight SEO advantage um, to having an, a domain name that matches your main target keyword. But that, yeah, again, that's only if you're starting from scratch. The thing to consider also there is that when you do that, it's hard to not use the same keyword in your, in your entire URL. So remember, try to avoid using the same word more than twice or more, you know, in your, in your URL, that's pretty hard when you've got an exact match domain like that. For example, Springfield landscaping, you know, their landscaping page, um, might be difficult to, uh, leave the word landscaping out of. So now we run into websites all the time that have domains like this. And like I said, you, you roll with it. We're not going to tell them to scrap everything because this is a, you know, this is relatively small, um, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Um, uh, well, I don't want to say that, but I being, having the same word in your keyword or in your URL is not going to necessarily break you. Um, try to avoid it. 
Um, but there's sometimes when we just simply can't avoid it. And so we roll with it, you know? Michael, tell me about over optimization. Does that, is that like gives you negative credibility or is it just a waste of space? Um, so over optimization really just means that like this scenario right here is that some people actually try too hard and Google actually kind of dings them for it Yeah. because Google may look at this and go, oh, this website's really trying to over, you know, over optimize um, and kind of game the, game the system here. So, yeah. um, we're, so it's, it's kind of less trustworthy. And so I don't necessarily, you know, that's not meant to frighten you by any means because my met, you know, uh, I, I always come at SEO from the standpoint of, you know, just keep moving forward in, you know, do the right things and, and you'll come out ahead in the long run. So, um, you know, if you happen to have a URL that's got, you know, the same, same words, you know, it's not going to break you. And in some cases it doesn't even affect you. It's just that it can, you know, Google is kind of a strange, uh, you know, a strange platform. Sometimes some websites might get dinged for this, but then others slip through the cracks. It happens all the time. It's, it's the weirdest thing. And that's why people, I think sometimes get so frustrated with Google, like, mm -hmm. well, what the heck, you know, I'm supposed to be doing all this stuff and I'm doing everything right. And yet I see my competitor over here is like doing all this stuff wrong and he's outranking me. Um, sometimes it just happens. You know, but if you're if you're doing the right things, always kind of moving forward, making your website better, um, you know, Google will eventually kind of figure that out. You know, and and I truly believe. I mean, think what you want of Google, but I really do think they have the customer and the user's best interest in mind for the most part. They want to serve up the best result for the user. Did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. All right. Next are your titles. Um, technically, these are known as title tags, but you will most likely see them called something like your SEO title. And all these are, are what shows up in the search engine like so. So, you know, when you do a search for your own, um, your own website, or if you Google your industry and you see your search result like so, well, the title tag is this. And every platform is gonna allow you to put whatever you want here. But most businesses actually, if they're lucky, they do their homepage and then they literally leave every page empty. And then in that case, Google just basically picks from your website. Um, and an interesting, like way to do this, uh, you can actually do this. You can go, I know this is probably gonna be small, but if you put your website domain and you put S-I-T-E, site, uh, let's do, we'll do my website, site. All right, site, and then your website, you can leave out the www you can actually see how Google has indexed your pages. So, um, so if you're curious, you know, here's my homepage. I'm actually trying to rank in a few other cities. So like I created a page for Spokane, if you're wondering why, what the heck that is. And so this here is my SEO title tag. Um, and so, you know, what I'm aiming for here is Spokane SEO. And then I'm, you get to kind of, craft this in a way that not only will rank for SEO, but you can also um, write this in a way that encourages a click, you know, it's, it's optimized for conversion. Most people just leave it like this, you know, obviously I wouldn't really need to optimize my privacy policy, but most people's pages are just like about, and then their business name. Check out my Fargo page, you know, Fargo SEO. Like this is, you know, I think if somebody saw this, it would really encourage them to click on it versus just having like 
Michael Quinn Agency SEO firm. So anyway, that was kind of a tangent. Um, so I'll get into how you want to craft this. Most website editors, this is WordPress. If you're using Wix, Squarespace, they've all got a spot for this and it's usually called the SEO title, like so. Um, I will touch on uh, the slug here. You usually can actually change your, your slug there also. So that's your URL, what we just talked about. Um, slug seems to be the more commonly used term, not sure why. And then you've got your meta description down here and your meta description is what shows up beneath your title tag. And I, I recommend you write something unique for that as well. And I'll talk about that in a sec. So first off, your title tag, also known as that SEO title, is the most important thing. You don't need to worry about the meta description nearly as much. Focus on the title. And you wanna write a unique one for each page on your website. Start with your homepage, then move on to your, your next most important pages, like your services or your products. And then, you know, you can work your way down to your about page or your, uh, you know, privacy policy. And here's the formula I recommend for your homepage. Your homepage would be your main target keyword plus your city if you're trying to rank locally. Um, but in some cases that might not be the case. And then if room permits, try to work in one or two supporting keywords and then your business name. Um, so moving on to kind of Springfield Landscaping Services, uh, what we did here for them was their, their main keyword that they're trying to rank for is Springfield Landscaping. Um, here's their business name towards the end. And a couple other words that were supporting keywords were landscaping services, landscaping companies. And so I wanted to work that in. So we ended up going with Springfield Landscaping Services and then Acme Landscapes Company. So um, we're, again, we're, you know, try, try to write it in a way that makes grammatical sense also. Um, but you can kind of mix in and match where those keywords are. Um, and yeah, anyway, I'll get into the actual formula right here. So here are the rules. Um, these are going to be limited to about 50 to 55 characters. You can write them longer. Um, most of these editors aren't going to limit you, but if you go over about 55 or 60 characters, your, um, your title is going to start to get cut off on the search engines. Um, and so I recommend trying to keep it to about 55 characters. That way you're not going to get cut off. You know, all these platforms, they change the characters, you know, every other year. So I think Google it's 60, uh, Bing might be like 50 or 55. Um, and then some are longer, but you know, if I go with trying to keep it around 55 or less. That way it, it all shows up. And then put your main keyword towards the front of the title. Um, from our experience, if you put the actual keyword that you wanna rank for towards the front, it, it seems to carry a little bit more weight and you'll have a, a better chance of uh, showing up for that. So that's why like in our scenario here, we put Springfield Landscaping right up front and the business name towards the back. Um, next, you know, keep the language plain and simple. Uh, you know, think about it from a reader's perspective. You don't want to get too fancy and you also don't want to use a bunch of filler words and adjectives, except in your blog posts. That's the one spot you can blog posts, podcast pages, things like that. You certainly can. Um, but you know, try to keep it plain and simple. And if you want, you can kind of lean towards the conversion aspect, like, uh, you know, rather than just being so straightforward, like Springfield Landscaping Services, you could be, um, like, for example, we're, we're working with an escape room right now. And they're actually the highest rated escape room in Reno, Nevada. They've got the most reviews. 
So we actually leaned into that and went with Reno's highest rated escape room um, or something to that effect. Because we're, we're thinking, okay, there's like 10 escape rooms in the area. If, if I search escape rooms, which one am I actually going to want to click on the most? And so this is your opportunity to actually, you know, play with some of your wording as well. Oh, and then uh, avoid using the same word twice, same as your URL. So that was your homepage. Next will be your service and product pages. The formula is going to be pretty much the same. Uh, have your focus keyword towards the front, including your city if you're trying to rank locally, and then add one or two supporting keywords where room permits, um, and then your business name if room permits. On, on your service pages, I feel like it's more important to describe the service more so than it is to, to name your business. So on your homepage, you know, you're trying to rank for the one big product or service you sell. So it makes sense on that. You know, it, it's the, it's your homepage. It, it, it should have your business name on it, but on some of these inner pages on your site, like your service and products, product pages, your, your business name doesn't have to be on every page. So in this formula, I'd recommend going more towards your keywords than your business name. So again, Going back to our patio installation, that page on our site could be patio design and installation, Springfield, Acme Landscapes. And I did say avoid filler words like and. Um, if you need to use the word and, which you oftentimes do, I prefer to use an ampersand because you'll save on character space. Um, and then another note, yeah, you, you would you'd really wanna avoid that in your URL. I know I touched on that, but again, um, try to avoid in your URL. You'll save on characters. Um, it, it'll just, it, it's, it's essentially just useless to have those words in your URL. But, um, so in this example for our title tag, our focus keyword again is patio installation, but, uh, patio design was the keyword that showed up, um, often and we want to rank for Springfield. So we were able to kind of craft it in this manner. Michael, what if your business name is really long and it has an and in it, like Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch? Good, good point. I should almost pull up yours and see what we what we put uh, for all of them. Yeah, so great point. Um, so in that case, I would, I guess that's probably a business decision on can you, you know, do you mind using the ampersand instead of the and on, you know, as to how it appears in a Google search, would an ampersand be okay for Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch? Um, that would have to kind of be a judgment call on, on your guys' end. But as far as it being long, you just kind of have to work with that. Um, and, and that certainly does happen often. So in that case, you probably would have to, um, you know, more so, you'd have two options. You'd probably only be able to use, you know, two to three words from your focus keyword up front. And then you would just, the rest would be your, your uh, business name. Or the other option is you don't list your business name and you would just have it all as, uh, uh, you know, the, the keyword. And if you want, I can pull yours up. No, that's okay. okay. And I'm not so much thinking about Dakota Family Services as Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. Yeah. Right, Just right. Kind of yeah. My frame of reference um, going through this. So, yeah, in that case, yeah, yeah, it's probably going to just kind of have to be like a, a branding judgment call on if you can, you know, use an ampersand. You might, you know, do you, do you guys shorten it ever? Like, uh, you know, DB, you know, just with the acronym. So, or you yeah. can just do like Dakota Ranch. I, it seems like you guys use that quite a bit. Um, so. 
And what do you do? I'm sorry. I feel like I'm taking over no, your bets. What do you do if branding wise, we don't like to use DBGR, but in terms of other providers and people in the state that it's used a lot. <laughs> and so it's very likely someone would be searching for DBGR, sure. but we don't really like it. Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah. Um, you know, most of the time I will tell businesses to go with what people search. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever, you know, gotten that question though, that what if people are searching, you know, and that's not really what you're wanting to rank for. So in that case, I would probably try to avoid it and just try to get the customer and your audience used to not using that, okay. uh, you know, shortened version. Thank you. Yeah. So blog posts, a um, little bit different. Blog posts are, you get a lot more leeway with blog posts um, because usually blog posts or podcast posts or, you know, articles on your website are going to have, are going to have titles that are longer. You're often optimizing for a focus keyword that's longer, um, like a question that's maybe five, six words long. So in that case, um, it's, I would recommend just a variation of your focus keyword and your blog title. And then if room permits, you can add your business name or website name, name at the end. Um, so in this case, you know, it's a blog post about backyard patio ideas for Springfield homes. Uh, and it, it, you know, if room permits, we can add our name at the end. But in a lot of cases, you might just be able to get your like your your main keyword. Let's say it's a how to thing, you know, like how to X, Y, Z. Um, you might not be able to fit your name in afterwards. So that's where you actually if you've got character space, you can maybe get creative and put in a uh, something that would convert the reader more or get them more likely to click on it, like read now or um, you know, oh, what was one I just did? Um, it's a blog post I recently posted. It was something about like the top 10 tips and I put, um, oh, like find the answers now or something. I, I don't have it in front of me, but I, I remember thinking I was being clever, like <laughs> click to read, but I mean, it was better than that. I guarantee it. Um, like you don't want to, you, you know, you can get creative here. Um, to try to, you know, com convince the reader to click on yours versus uh, something else, another option out there. So when it comes to blog posts, I, I'm, I'm happy to expand on this, but it really is kind of, you, you do kind of have a, a lot of leeway here. And I think a lot of it's going to go back to your keyword research and just making sure that you are trying, you know, in that blog post, what's its purpose, what gets searched the most related to that. Um, and then just making sure if you've got similar topics around that, that you, you know, you are, you're optimizing one blog post for a variation and the other for a different perfect example. So uh, YouTube and, you know, all these other platforms actually work the same way as Google. So I actually was struggling with what I was going to title. Um, actually, it was last week's video. So I'm going to, I've recorded that. I'm going to put it on YouTube. But then I've actually got another video about how to choose the best keywords for SEO. And I was, I had to find other variations of that that get searched. So what I ended, what I'm going to go with is, um, so my other video is how to choose the best keywords for SEO. Last week's presentation is going to be how to select the right keywords for your website, how to select the right keywords for your website. Um, so it's actually a totally different keyword because the keyword is the entire uh, phrase that gets searched. And so that's how I'm accounting for that. And that's the type of you know, thought process you want to have when it comes to your blog posts as well. All right. So 
Uh, I'll take questions on titles here and right after I talk about meta descriptions, which I've already touched on. Meta descriptions are just the descriptions that show up um, after your title tag. Man, I have like rambled on here. I'm sorry. Um, so one thing I'll say, you want to have a unique meta description on each page of your site, but they do not have a ranking element to them. They actually don't do anything to improve your rankings. However, because people see them, uh, they can help increase the likability or the likelihood that somebody's going to click on that. Right. So we want to think about it from conversion. Uh, that's why you don't want to just leave that blank on your website because Google's just going to select whatever it thinks is best to put there. But if you can go into each one of your page and craft um, something unique, you'll have a better likelihood that somebody will click on it. And that's really the true benefit. Uh, for this, write one for every page or blog post on your website. This you've got 150 to 160 characters. Otherwise, then it'll start getting cut off. And then each description should be unique on every page or post on your website. All right, any questions on titles and descriptions? All right. Um, oh, one other thing I'll try to say about descriptions is try not to copy descriptions that you've used other places, like um, try to make it unique. So what I mean is if you've used uh, the same description on, let's say you've got a business listing on another website um, and, and businesses fall into this trap all the time and I don't blame you. You've probably got a description about your business. You just simply copy and paste that everywhere. But actually try not to do that on your meta description on like your homepage. If it's, you know, try to make something that's like 60% unique. Um, that way it's just, Google likes that your website is completely unique. Unique. It doesn't want to see content that's already out on some other website, basically, as a rule of thumb. I probably just opened Pandora's box there. <laughs> All right. So we've talked about headings. We've talked about titles. Or no, excuse me. We've talked about URLs. We've talked about titles. Now for your headings, the third piece of the recipe. Headings are just what they sound like. It's the thing at the top of your website page and it's the things in the middle like, oops, like patio design and installation. And then down here, you know, we create perfect outdoor living uh, areas for your Springfield yard. Headings help Google understand the content on your page. So when, when I talk to most people about keywords, or they try to share with me what their understanding of keywords is, usually it's something to the effect of, oh yeah, you just wanna put those in your content, right? Well, that's like, you know, half, that's part of it, but most people think you've just kinda of gotta work it into your text. Actually, the, the truth of it is, you just need to work it into your, your uh, headings. <laughs> and you, you obviously you wanna have it in your, your text, in your actual like body copy, if possible, but it's it's not nearly as uh, as needed. And in fact, um, I would argue that if you didn't have your keyword mentioned one time in your actual text, but you had it on your headings, you could be just as successful as somebody that did have it in their text. So just like, you know, you gotta think of Google, Google is a machine that is trying to understand what's on your page. So just like chapters in a book, that's how you want to kind of think of the content on your site on, on each page. So if you don't take, I'm going to get into some technical stuff here in a sec, but if you take nothing more away from headings, it's just this, include your focus keyword at the top of your page, like so, like where it says patio design and installation. Um, you could do everything wrong on your page, but if you got that right, you would, you would be leaps and bounds ahead of a lot of people when it comes to SEO. So it's just, um, you know, including your focus keyword in that main headline at the top. It can, it can be variations. It doesn't have to just be your uh, focus keyword. It can be a combination, much like your title tag. It can be mixed and matched. 
Um, and I would encourage you, you know, you know, you want to write in a fashion that is, you know, readable and makes sense to the user as well. So there's sometimes like, for example, we talk mediators Fargo, I'm actually probably not going to be able to use that as is. Um, it'll probably be something like mediation services, but in that case, it's close enough. I'm using it in the URL. So, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, 90% of the battle is, is kind of achieved. Okay. So that's kind of the big thousand foot view. I'm going to get kind of technical here. And that is these things called heading tags. Um, heading tags are basically just something uh, on the back end of your website. And you've, you've, I guarantee you've probably encountered this um, where when you're actually formatting your website page, it, it gives you the option. Do you want this to be an H1? Do you want this to be an H2 or an H3? Well, most businesses and website managers just usually go with what looks good. Like the, your theme most likely has a setting for like H2s are going to be a little bit smaller. H3s are going to be even smaller than that. So most people just go, ah, oh, whatever looks good. And you know what ends up happening is they have a ton of H1s, which is actually a bad thing. And they don't really have a, a good format to this. So while I will kind of say that this is somewhat like, don't lose sleep over this, but if you thought about it in this, in this fashion, that if Google is a machine trying to understand what this page is about, it's on the back end of, of your code. And if you've ever gone into just like your visual or your um, text editor, you've probably even seen these where it's got like H1, H2. Google seeing this and trying to establish the relevancy of that content and, and what's more important than, uh, than other things. So this is where this comes into play. And essentially you just wanna have a hierarchy to your content. If you take nothing more away from this, it's that you want a hierarchy to the titles on that page, like so. Um, all right, I'll get into the rules here. Rule number one, and if you follow these, you will, you will be so far ahead of most people's SEO knowledge. There should be only one H1 heading and it should be at the title at the top of your page. So going back to our example, that would be our H1 heading. It would be in the H1 format. Oh, I guess I had a slide for it already. Rule number two, headings should follow a sequential hierarchy based on their importance, such as an H1 followed by an H2 followed by an H3. So again, going back to this slide, we've got our H1, there should only be one of those, but then we can have more of the others. You know, we've got benefits of landscape design, H2, our process H2. And then we go down to H3s, which kind of fall under the process of landscaping. And then finally, rule, th rule number three, it's okay to have two headings back to back. Just don't break your hierarchy. So what that means is, you don't want to jump from like an H2 to an H4 or, you know, an H4 to an H6. You want to have a consistent flow like this, like what I've already shown you, H1, to H2, to H3, back on up to an H2 and so on. I'm going to jump away from this. And I, if any of you guys use Google, uh, Google Docs, this is where we do all of our all of our work. So whether it's a, a content for a page for a client or a blog post. And what's great about Google Docs is that you can literally do this right in your Google Doc. And so I want you to think about this concept like you're writing a book because this is how you would, this all comes from, you know, that concept. My title is going to be my H1. I literally can do that right here. And you can do it in uh, Word too, I'm pretty sure, any text editor. Um, then my next kind of, you know, this is my title. My next kind of most important bullet and subparagraph is here. That's going to be in an H2. Here, this kind of has equal relevance. So this is going to be an H2. And then when I get down to, you know, programs divided by year in this blog post, year, year one isn't as important. That falls under program 
specifics by year. So I'm going to put that in H3. And you can see over here on the left, if you, um, you can open this little thing, it literally outlines it. You know, you, you can see the hierarchy, just like I showed you. Um, so this is, you know, if you want to, you know, get this right, do it in, in a word uh, processor, do it in Google Docs. And uh, you literally can just, you know, copy and paste that onto your site. And most of the time, it'll actually take all your headings as is. Not always, but a lot of times it will. And so, again, don't lose sleep over this. Um, but I, you, if you do follow this, you will be leaps and bounds ahead of your competitors. Um trying to think. Oh, and then as far as I just wanted to touch on your subheadings, your main heading at the top is the most important one. If you do not, like I said, if you do nothing else right, get that one right. <laughs> hey, Grace. I think you might've had the time wrong. We started an hour ago, but this will be recorded, but feel free to stay on. Um, so, these subheadlines, you don't have to be as strict with them. You, you want to try to include some keywords and especially try to include some sub, um, some supporting keywords, but you can have fun with these and they can be whatever you want. You know, that's where uh, you really have to find this balance between SEO and the user experience. And my recommendation to you is, you know, when possible, try to include some of your supporting keywords in your headlines. But the main one that you want to get right is just simply the one at the top. Um, and as you guys think of some questions here, I'm just going to show you my free template, which is inside of the Facebook group. Uh, it is the template called on-site optimization under guides. And again, if you need it, just ask me for it. But I want to show it to you here. This is going to basically take everything I talked about today and you guys can do this yourself. Literally, this is something I developed for my own business. And uh, what we do is, I'll show you an actual example because we've got some examples here in, in these additional tabs. So you've got homepage examples, You've got service page examples, you've got location pages. And as I add this, I, I need to add like blog examples and random pages. Um, we work with a lot of service businesses, so I don't have a lot of like product examples. But you literally, I, I took real life examples and I put them all into the sheet and I took out the client's uh, names and just added Acme. And, um, but you can see the industry, you can see what our main target keyword was and then how I structured the title tag and the meta description and the H1 heading, that, that top heading. And so you'll notice that sometimes we're really like, you know, it might just be the, the focus keyword. And then other times we had to get, you know, you have to get a little bit creative because of the industry. Um, like we were working with a commercial bank and that one was definitely interesting, you know, because um, they really wanted, they, you know, uh, they, they really wanted to mention the five star aspect um, of their bank. So, and then this thing about Bauer Financial, um, where they got that five star rating from. So there's some examples, but let's see how this really works. What we always do is we grab, what we do is we grab every page on a website and we just throw it into here and you can either do it one of two ways. Sometimes we literally just grab the URL and you can throw it in here. Or sometimes we just put like, like uh, patio installation, you know, you can, however it works for you. you can, this could be like a patio installation page and then service number two, service number three. And then, you know, down here's our about page. You pick your, you should have your focus keywords already from your keyword research. Um, you can put your original URL and then basically all, everything over here is where you get to kind of start crafting your SEO. Some cases, but not all, you might want to create a new URL. And in that case, you know, you put it in here and then 
you'd need to decide, do I need a 301 redirect? Uh, it's gonna be defaulted to red. So that's like just trying to get your attention to it. But let's say you, you did a 301 redirect, you make it green. If you don't need it, just go down. If you literally don't need to do redirects, just go down the list and put NA. But what the coolest thing about this, and this is why I created this for myself, is that I wanted something where when I typed, it would tell me if my length was correct or not. And so you literally can just start typing into this thing um, and it will tell you the characters. And when you get into the 50 to um, 60 range, it'll turn green. Anything under that's gonna be white because you, you, you're kind of under the limit. And then everything over is going to be in red. So let's see. Uh, so there I'm at 49, you know, and boom, I'm at a perfect 60. Let's see if I go over. Let's say I go, there we've got red. So again, you know, um, I'd recommend trying to keep it around 55 characters, but there are plenty of scenarios and you'll actually see this where sometimes we go under, sometimes we go over because we ultimately, we are, you know, trying to write this in a way that it makes sense, write it in a way that will look good, uh, to the viewer on Google. And, uh, you know, the same goes for the meta description as well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, if, you know, when you make this update, you can just, uh, update the date here. And so this is, you know, this is a huge help for our business uh, when we do kind of go through this process. And, uh, you know, I'd love any recommendations you guys have as to how to improve this for from your guys' standpoint, if there's, a, a, you know, any way this could be crafted. I kind of had to take, you know, what we use and, and, you know, make it, you know, kind of like a retail version of it. So thanks everybody thanks. for your time. Thanks so. everyone, bye. Thanks for watching. If you want to be a part of these live trainings and get answers to your SEO related questions, all you have to do is join my private Facebook group. Go to mysiteranked.com forward slash Facebook and join for free.